work, 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 work. Work, 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 work. <coughs> the twittering twitch dot tv forward slash pen addict hey Tommy what's up bud thanks for joining me I got no plans today so y'all gotta keep me busy I'm I, I, actually I'm legitimately working Mooney John hello Thanks for dropping in. Jesse, what's up? Famous podcaster Jessica Coles has joined us today, gang. Do you know how famous she is? So famous. All the fame. Super good feedback on Jessica's post. Jessica's uh, podcast yesterday joining me. Posting caps. Awesome. Thank you so much for using your Twitch Prime on me. Little old me. I appreciate that. That's awesome. And uh, speaking of which, posting caps, members, I, I'm sending an email. I will send this email while we're talking so I remember um, and get my emotes done for all the subs. They can use some cool stuff. So I'm going to type that up while we're. Uh, I, I'm legitimately working <laughs> while y'all are watching me. So uh, it's not just, a, not just a thing. It's. I got to get some work done. I don't have internet at my house right now, so I can't get my normal work done. So right now, Doug Beal, I know, right? I need to get those kind of, uh, oh, cool. That's Chris. Thanks so much, bud. Yeah, Doug's got the sweet relay swag. Sherry, what's up? So uh, as I am talking to y'all, I'm legitimately working. Um. Like I said, I don't have internet at my house. Uh, I have my work laptop in front of me. Work la laptop, my laptop. So I'm not actually working. Yeah, where is Tony? He's usually the first one in here. Uh, I don't think I've talked to him today. Um, so I have all my stuff set up on here. So I'm editing tomorrow's blog post while we're talking. And tomorrow's bog blog, blog post. That'd be a different podcast. Is I'll tell you in a second as soon as I copy this image. So when I talk, I lose my lose my place. Pen with writing. So I have a one of Susan's posts going up tomorrow. It you know Sherry, it was average, average at best. You know what are you gonna do? Jesse's a she's a tough nut. To, oh. Jesse's in the chat room. <laughs> Sorry, Jesse. Uh, it was awesome. It was so amazing. It was the best podcast I've ever done in the entirety of my life. <laughs> I love you, Jesse. Rewizzles, what's up? I see you got that. You got that Overwatch, uh, Overwatch uh, avatar there. Rewizzles is that? Um, is that what uh, from the uh, World Championships or the E League? The uh, what are, what's that? Uh, what's the league that they started? The Overwatch League. I watched some of the beginning of that. I uh, don't feel stupid, Sherry. It uh, it literally just happened like two days before. Oh, cool. So me and my son really enjoy watching that. I I don't play Overwatch. Jim, what's up? That's one name I can I can remember. See, posting caps. I'll have to remember that. Skins and emotes and fancy Twitch icon. I wonder how I can get t fancy Twitch icons. I've got, I'm getting my emotes working. Um, where's that final gonna be, Jim? It's gonna be in NYC. Sam Jing, hey, thanks for the email today. That was a great email. And then you replied, and then I saw I had a typo in there. That was terrible. Like I'm literally sitting here. I tried to get as much work done before the stream, but I still, I still gotta get some work done. Oh, at the Barclays Center, dang. That's man, and they sold that place out. That's awesome. I love hearing that. That's really cool. See, I, I literally, literally am working while I talk to y'all. I wasn't joking about 
trying to get some stuff done. I am a terrible parent when I'm at home when my internet's down because I get frustrated that I can't do things. It's like for all the analog work that I do, I got to have my internet. And they're doing some, I think it's just not my terrible country internet. I think they're they're doing some construction, adding in some power lines um, to my area since we're out in the country. They have to expand the power when there's new houses. So all the roads are dug up and I'm wondering if that's why my internet's even worse than normal. <clears throat> yeah, rip to the BYOBers. Two of them in the chat room right now so far. There might be more joining up. So I know Jesse's got... Uh, things in the hopper Yevgeny and Michael have already posted things uh Jim's not gonna be left behind that dude rules he's gonna make some awesomeness for us all so uh Jeffy Jesse even told me some top, top secret stuff that didn't make the podcast yesterday so I, I appreciate you uh filling me in with some info there Jesse so if you want to see what it looks like Actually, you don't, because it'd look terrible on this camera. I was gonna say, this is <laughs> this is what my blogging screen looks like. Thanks, Kcore. Jesse was Jesse's in here right now. Jesse Rain. Um, she did a wonderful job. Uh, I've gotten more feedback on that episode than I have in any episode in recent memory since probably like the Atlanta Pen Show episode. So that was that's super. It uh, talking with Jesse, it just flows. She makes it easy. Like we just we just chat. We're friends. We chat. You know. So uh, when that's when that's the setup, then I mean it, you can't help but have like a good conversation. So like we just it's like we were just sitting at the bar chilling. You know. Yeah, Jesse. Like I I had a very frustrating morning. Um, let my uh, I don't know my attitude get in the way of my work just because I couldn't do this stuff that I am doing now so you know and it's a, honestly Jim it's a lot easier to interview someone one on one like when it's both Mike and I trying to interview someone it's good it's fine it's well I don't have to tell you you had eight people on and trying to interview people so <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> but uh, you can't get that conversation when it's one-on-one. -on -one. All right, so we're getting tomorrow's post scheduled. If I didn't already say it, it's the Faber-Castell, uh, the new Flamingo Ambition, the limited edition Flamingo Am Ambition. I sent this one to Susan. I almost didn't because I loved it so much. It's a really neat-looking pen. I think I did it on like my first unboxing here and I should have a new, I'll probably have another unboxing next week. I think I got a big pile of stuff coming. Yeah, it's really pretty. It's really pretty. It's a very flamingo week here on the pen addict, which we had flamingos on the right notepads, notebooks. Uh, I don't know. Y'all tell me y'all ask, see if Mike uh, has lost anything. Everything looks good on my side, bud. And I hope you're doing okay. I know, uh, Jim's loss had to be tough uh, for you and Audrey and the whole FC family. Yeah, that was, uh, yeah, I I mean, I was a guest a couple of times on the BYOB. And, like, since I didn't have to drive, it was easy for me. Like, I could just sit there and let y'all let y'all uh, pin me down. Yeah, Mike, I, uh, I can't even imagine. Um... And if y'all didn't see it, if y'all are in the Slack channel, uh, Audrey's collected messages uh, to print out for Jim uh, at the uh, at the funeral, not the viewing for the family. So y'all definitely take care of that. So um, when we talked about you know, on Monday when I did uh, when I streamed about uh, you know the loss we've all unfortunately had to deal with this week, I mentioned about doing like the coke bottle or the coke can for jim like on the table so i ordered um a 12 pack of coke bottles that i'll say jim yeah you might it, it was like a half an hour of rough stuff but it was like it, it it was helpful to like you know have some laughs share some jim stories 
Uh, but I don't blame you. I, I don't blame you one bit. But um, I'll bring in. I'm bringing those bottles um, for our vendors to put on their table at um, DC Pen Show. You know, just as a, a memory for Jim. So I'll have some for us, some for you know his friends, some for the FC table. Um, so that should be cool. They already shipped, so they should be here in time. That's what I was worried about if they would actually get here in time, but they did already shipped. Ship. So I should have them in time for DC. Packing them is another story. I wonder if I should reship those to someone. That might be an option. Hey, Sandra. Are you going to DC? Did I hear you saying you're going to DC? Yeah, that's rough, man. Like, Jim was not an old guy. Not by my measurements. As in getting on up there an age guy myself, I don't find uh, Jim to be old. <laughs> it's funny how young old gets the older you get. <laughs> All right, that's posted. So we got tomorrow's post up, but I have got some knock stuff I just did. Sent them out. Oh, Sherry, I think I have one of your emails in my inbox if you're still listening. <laughs> okay, cool. 28 is a baby. I do. <laughs> I need to uh I need to reply to that. Jim is definitely not old. <clears throat> Seventeen, oh no, you could be my child. Oof, I don't even want to think about that. Actually, uh I joke with Jeff like you know, Jeff could be my child, practically. I'm an old man. <clears throat> so yeah, I didn't have any... I I didn't have anything totally planned for today. Other than marking things off my... Uh, my checklist. My to-do list, because... This is the only place I have internet access these days, and it's driving me back crazy. So if y'all want to, if y'all have any questions, topics, let me know. We'll knock them out. Today is a good day for that. Oh, this is there another post, uh, Franklin Christoph post on Instagram. Yep, hit me with questions for less. She will, we're actually, this is next Wednesday's show, but we're recording it tomorrow night because I'm going to be out of town. For our, we have a schedule conflict over the next, like, four days. I'd rather wait till like, Monday or Tuesday, but I'm in a bad internet situation. Again, being out of town. So shoot me questions here. I'll write them down. Uh, what's your criteria for looking at pins you aren't sure if you're keeping or not? My criteria is don't buy them if I'm not for sure I'm going to keep them. Now that differs in stuff that I'm buying with my own money then I get to pick from companies to review so a lot of times the companies I work with will say you know what are you looking at reviewing you know we'll try to go over some new stuff because that's what they like and then I'll try to determine like am I going to keep these am I going to send them off to you know uh, Susan or Jeff or Sarah I'm guessing that's what you're talking about and I kind of know what each reviewer strong point is like um susan's really good with everything fountain pen um i try to send her strictly fountain pens uh, because she's just got a ton of experience with that um yeah so let me know if i'm i don't know if i'm going down the right path for you jim but i'll finish that thought since i started it so susan does a lot of fountain pens jeff will does anything um from notebooks to pocket pens to fountain pens to like I like to send him like the EDC stuff um and then I actually hire hired Sarah specifically to do 
like jet pen stuff, even though it's not strictly jet pen stuff, but that type of thing, I like highlighter, like the things you think of from the Japanese market highlighters, you know, the small notebooks, pencils, erasers, washi tape, like that fun stuff that Susan and Jeff aren't doing that I do, but I needed someone to help me with that. Like me and Sarah kind of review the same stuff and then I'll jump in the fountain pens and things like that. So, um, you know, if there's a like a brand new product on the market, you know, sometimes I'll take a first shot at that. Um, it also depends on how busy we get. Sometimes I've got months worth of stuff to be reviewed. Sometimes I have weeks worth to be reviewed. So, you know, we don't have any, um, I don't have a uh, uh, publishing schedule. I've tried to do that in the past and it's, it's too flexible. Like, and that's okay. Like I need to be flexible for the, some of the reviews, but you know, I do have to mix, mix things up and around. So what were you actually asking me <laughs> if you're asking me like on the personal level, I do try to be very thoughtful about the things that I want to use myself and I'm at max capacity right now, man. It's like no joke, max capacity. When did you get over FOMO? That's a great question. Here, let me put this through Evan real quick. Um, and I'll, I'll come to yours next. And let me see if I missed anything here. So let's, uh, so let me finish up with Jim, then we'll hit the FOMO question, then we'll hit Evan's question. So I'm really conscious about trying to purchase things that I know I'm gonna use and keep, but I also get caught up in you get up in that pen show hype, Jim, you know it, you've been there and you just can't help with end up with two or three pins. You're not 100% on, like I might be 75, 80% on, like, I know I'm going to love it, but I'm going to love it enough to justify the money I'm spending on that pen. And I do get caught up with that in like live situations from time to time. Um, that's where like I have a shopping list of things I really want, say like the sailor ocean, the program ocean, or then I have things that are like maybes if it comes up in time, like the Parker Dual Fold, the modern Parker Dual Fold I picked up at Raleigh. So I kind of keep these two mental lists going. Um, right now I don't have anything that I want, so that bodes well from uh, for the DC show for my pocketbook, but you never know what I'm gonna run into there. But I really want to make sure when I'm purchasing something that I'm planning on using it. I don't buy things to collect necessarily. I mean, not to collect dust, not to sit. Um, so I buy things to use, which we, we talk about that. When did you get over FOMO or do you still have it? I got over it probably only like last year sometime. I've learned, I kind of learned it with ink. Um, in the past year or two buying, you know, Sailor Apricot, Sailor Sky High, you know, hunting down those bottles a couple years ago when they weren't made anymore, then three, four years later, Sailor comes back around and makes them again. You know, why did I go through all this effort and cost to hoard three bottles of ink that I haven't even finished one yet, only for them to come back around and, you know, reintroduce that ink again? That kind of told me that I'm never really going to miss out on anything, even if I miss out on something, right? So there's always going to be another ink. There's always going to be another pen. There's always going to be another notebook. It took me a while to realize that. Um, Mont Blanc JFK was another one. It was like, well, I need two bottles of this. Well, I still haven't finished the first bottle. And like, I think they made another batch of it. Um, same thing goes for pens and paper. Like field notes, I got off the like buying extra bandwagon a while ago. Um, I just stick with what I get in my subscription, like, and I'm I'm happy with that. You know, the two packs I get are fine. I don't need five because you know whatever that because is. Some people's case, oh, maybe they'll go up in value and I can sell them for something. Like that's never a thought process of mine. So it's easier to not have FOMO when you're not thinking about reselling things or or things like that. So it was ink hunting probably within the last year or two um, and getting caught with, uh, you know, extra thing with inks like being remade and, you know, and uh, 
kind of making you feel like you've wasted your time chasing these things down. There's always the next thing. And it took me a while to get over that. It took me a while to get past that. So that's always a good question. Um, like I see all those sailors like in Japan right now, I have no interest in hunting them down. I just don't need more sailor pens. Like that purple, that purple one, um, that translucent purple one with the gold trim, man, that's one of the coolest pens I've ever seen. I have zero interest in purchasing it. Like it, I mean, I don't, it's hard, it's hard to explain. It's such a personal thing, right? Um, so, you know, it's, uh, to, to each their own, just, you know, watch, the, watch the wallet. I, my wallet's been, my wallet's been too open this year. I need to rein it in. <laughs> we'll see how DC goes for sure. All right, Evan, let's see. What did you say here? Okay. My question is more of an investigative thing. Maybe you're already familiar. Is there a batch of Caveco sport classic demos out there with a thicker than normal feed and no breather hole in the nib? I'm just curious what they are and where they come from. I've, I haven't seen those. I'm going to take a look at this picture here. Huh. I have not seen that nib. I wonder if they're changing their nib manufacturer. I have not seen the non-breather hole Kovacos now, now that you sent in this picture. I don't, has anyone else seen those? And if you do, do you know where you got them from? It would be cool if they went to Yovo nibs or something like that. Those Bach nibs are just so hit and miss. Kaveco's been known for those hit and miss nibs. I wonder if that's a brand new nib. Maybe. I'd like to see that. I wonder, uh, I would think, I think we would see something if there was a design change like that. I think we'd see more people talking about it. Um, What's, uh, Rachel's mentioned it as, ma she's mentioned the manufacturing change or the breather hole slit change. <laughs> so let me pull up uh, most wanted. So I'm gonna go look at most wanted, most wanted, what is the most wanted pens dot D, let me see. See if he has any pictures. Okay, the move to Jovo. That's good. Hey, that's awesome, man. I'm such a huge fan, or such a more of a fan of Jovo nibs. Let me see what uh, Sebastian has on his site. If he has any pictures of uh, of pins without without breather holes. So most wanted pinscom is a very interesting site <laughs> seeing that it's owned by the son and employee of Kaveco and they sell Twisbees. That's interesting. So let me pull up the sports here. I do, I'm just looking for pictures. He has like the most current stuff usually. I'm just curious if any of the pictures show. Yeah. So diplomats uh, now being distributed by Yaffa, not no longer um, Larry. What was his? What was the name of his company? I'm blanking. So yeah, I'm guessing you're right, Evan. I'm guessing if I had to put money on it, I would guess it's older, not newer. Let's see here. Where are the clear demos? Geesh. I should probably translate this page. Yeah, it's all the standard images like I would expect. You know what's funny is is um, Sebastian did get the art sports up. Let me see if I can. And I don't know if y'all remember, not this Chicago. Yeah, Larry is no longer um, distrib distributing Diplomat as of a few weeks ago. I don't think that's, I don't think I'm telling uh, stories out of school, but yeah. Interesting, huh? 
It's back to my art store story. Ah, that's such a good question, Sherry. Romantic or sentimental appeal to you? Absolutely. So we'll talk about that. I just want to look at one thing. Um, so the art sports are actually on what most wanted pens now. Um, yeah, I 100% Mike uh, agree with both of those assessments there. Larry's such a good dude. I mean, I don't know. Is it Ken? Ken with Yafa? I don't know him very well, but I've just never been him. I've just never been fans of the the brands that he's he's carried. We've talked about there for. <laughs> Look at re whistles, man. Official channel pimp. I like it. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to bang my desk. Uh. So the. Some pens do have a Ramona. Yeah, thank you. Points of distinction. I was blanking. So yeah, Larry wants to keep doing uh, um, pen shows and stuff. Like he's gotten in touch with me to like carry knock products, which you know I gotta send him the price list and stuff like that. So he's they're still gonna be involved in pen shows. I don't know what else they distributed besides points of distinction. So I don't know what else, what other brands that they had because it was always Diplomat at the shows, right? Did they have anything else? Yes, the e-cig thing is a big deal. Uh, with the Twisby Ecos, that happens a lot. All right, Sherry. So, my romantic pens. There's there's definitely one that comes to mind and probably two that I can think of off the top of my head. So, and it's more because of the stories attached to them. And it's nothing new for me. Sorry, I'm shutting down this uh, this laptop here. Um, the Pilot Murex is a very sentimental pen for me because of how I obtained it. You know, my friend Thomas Hall got me into the vintage Pilots like the Murex by sending me an assortment of pens. Thomas probably sent me close to 20 pens in various stages as I was just learning fountain pens. Like once he learned that I like the Japanese fine nibs, he kept sending me stuff like that. So he sent me a Murex at one point. And then, you know, I used it, I loved it. Um, I can't remember if I sent it back to him and then he returned it in a future package or he told me to send it back, send back his pens, except the Murex, that's mine to keep. And not only, you know, regardless of the story aspect of it, the pen is everything I want in a pen, right? Like that's kind of my style, my aesthetic. Um, it's a pen I love to use, love to write with. So not only is it an older vintage pen that you can't that you can no longer buy not only does it fit my aesthetic and style and writing style it also has a story attached to it so i'm romantic about that pen for that reason um so that's one the second one is my nakaya portable which is my first nakaya because of the um what's the word it's not what i went through to get to it but like the planning i had for that pen like it wasn't going to be expen my first like really expensive purchase but it was a pen that i really wanted and it was scary because you don't know what you're getting it's hard to you know i've tried friends nakai's but it's not like you can go to a pen show unless you go to la and nibs.com is there to try a tray of nakai's to see what you like um so that's ended up being like one of my favorite purchases ever just because a lot went into m me pulling the trigger on that purchase you know it was a year or more if not two of deciding on the style the shape the finish the nib where i'm going to order it from um saving the money all these things <clears throat> so those are the two pins when i think about out of the pins i use what pins do i romanticize more than some those are the two uh, hey Kung Boar, glad you joined us. Those are the two that kind of stand out to me. 
Um, I could probably come up with some more, but when I look at all the pins I own and all the pins I use, those two are the standouts. So, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, like the 823, the Pilot Custom 823, that's a straight tech. You know, like you said in your original question, do pins have romantic or sentimental appeal as opposed to straight technology? Pilot 823 is straight technology. I love that pin because it's kind of a feat of engineering in just the build quality, the uh, vacuum filler, how well it writes, how well it fits my hand in style. But, you know, I don't shed tears over it like I do the other pins. <laughs> but I recommend it more than those other two because you can actually get it, right? It's more reasonable, if you will, and more accessible. Um, the mystery and appeal of Nakaya still exists to me. In when I use the ones that I have, I don't want any more because I'm not interested in spending the money. Because I'd need to take like the next step up or two to feel like I'm getting a pen I want to use on a regular basis. So like my uh, portable, I think it cost me like seven hundred, seven hundred fifty dollars, um, which is crap ton of money but that one's been worth it for me there's nothing else unless i spend twice that much uh, and i enjoy this pen so much like jim saying he has his perfect model this one's kind of perfect to me the next one i'd get would have to have like artwork like the uh was it rising dragon um uh, one of the dragon like uh, those are stunning but what's that going to cost me eighteen hundred two thousand dollars i have no interest in a pen that expensive like that just doesn't appeal to me. So the maybe some of the mystery has worn off, but the appeal hasn't. I, I still think they're probably the best pins in the world. They're just not that accessible to everyone. Um, we're talking about Nakaya's right now. And before I was talking about what pins do I have pins in my collection that I romanticize? Like, do, do any of y'all have a pin that you have for just you know you would just be heartbroken if you lost it like the i talked about the pilot 823 wouldn't be that because i can replace that tomorrow you know but the pens like my pilot murex and my nakaya i can't replace either of those pens uh easily i mean the murex i can hunt one down and get one great but thomas didn't give me the new one you know thomas gave me the one i have that means something to me the nakaya they don't make that finish anymore that was a nibs.com exclusive uh the ao tamanuri uh, the blue green so yeah Sam Jing I mean it is hard like we all have different things that we uh, that we uh, that we go after and that we're interested in and yeah I mean those 3776s are awesome you should save up for that Rotring Core Rollerball is a good one that's very much like the Murex where it's an awesome pen um, and you know you'd probably be you know tore up if you lose it because it'd be hard to get one um certainly not cheap i have the lava fountain pen that i don't use enough i just love that pen that's such a good pen i should use it more i probably need to get the nib done on that one i think it's a medium nib that's probably why i don't use it as much and then i just got the the gold nib uh the uh the stand the 600 um yeah, that has a broad nib like that nib I won't mess with it's kind of cool it's very uh very blocky and and stubby yeah Jim if you wanted another than Nakai it's like 2k yeah the core ball <laughs> I gotta get the refill for that that's a fancy pen Mike I do like that pen I need to use it the legend l16 which model is well, I mean not which model which uh color or or wood or material is your L16, Jim. <laughs> that core ballpoint makes me giggle. That's such a cool pen. So Kung Boar, just getting in the habit, just got an AL star and an Ahab, so nothing unique here. Yeah, yeah, but you know, you're in it, it's fun. Lebanese cedar wood, well, that seems pretty important to you, right? So Kung Boar, the uh, for some reason your your uh, post got uh, <laughs> held by the mods. 
Um, I guess it's because you're into the habit. You know, they must think we're talking about drugs, which, you know, this is the Pin Attic podcast. So I'm surprised my name didn't get modded. That's hilarious. Smells nice. I don't have any. So I only have one fountain pen inked right now. It's the Sailor Ocean. I just picked up and I'm having a difficult time figuring out what, what I'm going to ink up. And I haven't had one of my Crusac pens inked up in a while. So I'll probably do that. I got the last one I got and I haven't used it enough is the um, I got one of the moose antlers with the Damascus sections in Baltimore. So I should probably ink that one up and bring it to D.C. If anyone's going to be in D.C. and wants me to bring anything, let me know. I'll be happy to bring it. I'll link up some pens and make sure I bring some stuff to D.C. For sure. Oh my gosh. I don't have a Ralph nib. We keep saying we're going to hook up and and make it. Yeah, Ryan Krusak. That's who we're talking about, Blaine. Sounds exactly what uh, Beef Jerky's talking about. And that's what I'm talking about with my moose antler. Yeah, be very careful. He's. I bet he lives less than 30 minutes from where you live. To be honest. Sandra, you still in here? She might be gone. I was going to see if I can ship her something. Yeah, that's what I was about to ask. So we need to, uh, I need to hook up with Ralph. That might be one purchase I get. <laughs> if he invites you to your house, that means you get to make a pen. So, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to try to do that next year. That's my game plan. Because I keep saying, like, he's probably two hours from me. So, Mike, are you driving or flying? I'm looking for someone who's driving because I might have a package. I don't know if you heard me talking about the Coke bottles. I don't know that I want to carry those in my suitcase. I would pre-ship and then get someone to drive them. Yeah, so there's some decent flex nib options starting to come around in. Okay, I'll talk to you. I need to see when I get them in, Mike. That's the kicker right now. So I will talk to you um, because I need to get some to you anyway. So, yeah, let me figure that out. Let me see when they arrive and see how fast I can turn them around. What day are you leaving? Are you driving up on Thursday? You won't be a DC, but something that looks like you. I'm a little bit scared at this, uh, Jim. I don't know what that could be. <laughs> okay, cool, Mike. I'll I'll figure it out. So I I don't, I don't know if I should ask further questions about that or not, Jim. So is anyone, anyone going to DC actually shopping for anything? I don't know what's new out right now. I'll probably have the Kumpu before I get to DC. I'll be bringing that. I think I got UEF on my Kumpu instead of soft medium, which was kind of a first for both of those, both of those pens. So let's do a poll. <laughs> Night. I couldn't decide, Mike. I really couldn't decide. I, I was that was one that I was torn on. I don't have a UEF. I have the soft fine. I thought uh, I thought maybe I'll try the UEF, even though man, that's even fine for me. So we're gonna say let's do a poll <laughs> on your kumpu. What <laughs> would you choose? So we have. <laughs> I like these poles. Ultra, extra, fine. Or soft medium. I just thought it was weird that those were two of the uh, the choices for this pen. Not weird. I mean, good. Like it's it's something different. <laughs> All right. So you do here. I'll do it. I'll show you how to type it. You go bang. Bang, vote, space, and number. So since I chose Ultra Extra Define, I had to choose that. Brad, with the recommendations, 
with the AL star and the Ahab, what's the next pin? I should try to figure out what I like. It depends on what you want to do. It depends on your writing. It depends on, you know, are you using your pens for work notes? Are you voting for, are you doing letter writing? Um, you said a minute ago that you like flex. Do you want more flex? There's not, you know, a ton of flex options out there. Yeah, there's a million, million ways to go with this type of question. Um, you know, what's your handwriting like? Um, you know, so tell us, tell us a few more things about what you'd like to accomplish. You know, as far as, you know, do you need another pen, right? Like I'll tell people, you know, if you're happy with one pen, um, you know, stick with that. And, you know, you don't have to continue going up the, uh, up the path if you're not interested in solving a new problem. Hey, I know someone that sells Estherbrooks. They have some, they have some flexi nibs. Oh, you missed someone looking for you right in the beginning. They're like, oh, where's Tony? You did miss a poll. So you, you should vote on the Kumpu poll, Tony. Uh, zero for ultra extra fine or one for soft medium. So you should definitely vote on that. So yeah, Kung Boar, feel free to, to give us some more tips, some more info. <laughs> Tony missed the poll. God, there's got to be some kind of add-ins to Twitch where you can do like show titles. Uh, I'm sure there's lots of scripting and and like API stuff you can do here. Um, like I haven't figured any of that stuff out. <laughs> exactly. I think it's accurate. Like I think it's spelled correctly for what for this uh, for this instance. Uh oh, we have an intruder. Who's that, Elizabeth? Sorry. No, you can come over here. You want to say hey to Elizabeth? We're over here. Uh, it's Studio B because I have no internet, so the kids are bored out of their minds. So there's Elizabeth. She uh, so Mike's here. Mm -hmm. uh, she likes uh, Mike's uh, Mike's Friday YouTube um, YouTube live chats. Mike, you got a link to your live chat? Just in case someone here doesn't know about your live chats, throw that in there. I wanted to say hi on the chat, but. Oh, were you downstairs watching? Yeah. Were you logged in? <laughs> I didn't even see that. Well, like, I don't know who's necessarily logged into the channel. Well, no, I didn't, I didn't log in. I just oh. put on the thing. So you were just, uh, so there's Mike. Mike always does Friday, 4 o'clock. Uh, are you doing one this week, Mike? Who's Calligraphy Nut? He's Calligraphy Nut. Who? Yes. Who? Calligraphy Nut. <laughs> oh, who is he? Okay, no live chat this week, but go follow Mike on YouTube. For sure. You're going to Maryland. Yeah. So Elizabeth would be disappointed. She's she remembers all this stuff. Like I I'm never can remember stuff on Friday. I, I'm gonna make it soon though. I probably See, wouldn't be able I to told watch you that's, it. I told you that's calligraphy night. Well, no, because we'll probably be over here, so you'll probably will be able to watch it. No. Okay, oh. maybe try Kung Boar, You might wanna um. Maybe go for a stub nib next, something like that. You know, so you have you have flex. You might want the line variation of a stub. You know, and you can get that in, in various pens, whatever pen models, you know, speak to you. You, know, you can get them from a Kaveco to a Twisby and then on up from there. Um, I like the Pilot Prera stub, personally, because it's a .9 stub. It's a little bit finer than the 1.1s and 1.5s like Lamy's. Or did you say you said you got a... What nib do you have on your uh, AL Star? Yeah, the Nemo scene ones are finer than normal, which I like those too. So I tend to get my nibs ground into like fine stubs and fine cursive italics. So yeah, that might be something good to try. What emote is that, Doug? That's super cool. If you highlight over them, does it tell you the name of them? Squid. Oh, you have to do the different parts? Squid, one, two, three, four. How do you do that? Well, Doug's a magician, so. Yeah, look at something with a stub nib then to give you that different, uh, like I didn't find my calling in fountain pens till I realized that there was such a thing as a stub nib and the way I write the, oh, y'all are killing me with the even notes now. These are amazing. What's that one? I haven't tried the Super 5 pens or the inks for that matter. 
they look cool. I really like that utilitarian basic look um, of the uh, of the Super Fives, but I haven't tried one yet. Are you playing any games today? Yeah, I'm gonna play Destiny here in a little bit. I need to I need to kill some aliens to like. I've had a What's little that? bit of an insane day. What? That's Kappa. He's Kappa. Kappa. Thanks for hanging out. Please hit the follow button, the little heart, to be notified when the pen and it goes live. I need to do more chatbots too. So yeah, I'm actually, this is a medium fine, medium fine stub. <laughs> Let me mute my phone. That was loud. Full blast. Yeah, I use the uh, um, fine um, Japanese nibs and then do like a cursive metallic grind on those. Um, this is a medium fine with a stub nib. So that's kind of my, my thing. Yeah, I will not be getting 50 to anything this time. I did 50 for Future War Cult Mike. But it took me two rallies, so now I mean fit for Dead Orbit because I wanted the Graviton Lance thing, and then uh, wow, did I accidentally answer that? I almost answered that call. Yeah, Jim, I don't think you met Elizabeth. I don't think she was there the time you were in Atlanta. I think she that was the year it was like storm. Jim, beef jerky. Yeah, <gasps> Jim, you'd like Jim. He's a good dude. I know. I do like Jim. I'd even say that to his face. I know he's listening here, but I, I tell like him Jim. To. Not that Jim. Our other, our other buddy, Jim. Oh, I don't know him. No. Is he in North Carolina? Uh, no, Jim is in New York. I mean, does he go to the North Carolina Pen Show? Jim has not been to the North Carolina Pen Show that I know of. Rad. I say rad. I say stoked a lot. I mean, Jesse, don't act like you're not the same age as me. Don't ask, Don't act like you didn't grow up in the 80s like me. I do say gnarly. Gnarly, rad, gnarly? stoked. It's gnarly? Awesome. Gnarly? I mean, awesome never goes out of style. I don't say tubular. That was never one of mine. Yeah, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. My kids barely even know what that is. I Tyler seen does. it on TV. Yeah. Well, but like the new version. Like the one, like, one that looks like real people? <laughs> no, not that one. Wait, like cartoon? Yeah, tubular is not a good word. Jessie was a valley girl. I can see that. I try not to say lit. I feel funny when I say lit. Oh, let me stop this poll. Uh, soft, medium, and a runaway. I figured that's that would have been my my guess. Mom says lit jit. Don't do that. Why? <laughs> All right. Anything else you need? No. Okay. Goodbye. Bye. Mwah. Love you. Love you. Yeah, we're too old to say lit. Kungborg, you're not muted. What, uh, did something happen? Like, I don't, let me look in the logs. Turtles are people too. No, I don't see any alerts from, uh, sometimes the, uh, auto moderation will catch words or phrases like the habit. <laughs> you know, apparently that's code for whatever you're doing, Kungborg. But there's nothing in the, uh, in the logs right now for anything that was modded. Yeah, you missed this the other day. Tony was telling us about all the new Double Dare, but I haven't had TV this week, so I haven't uh, I haven't seen it. Sorry, write down notes. That's crazy. Oh, yeah, nothing, nothing in the logs. <laughs> Triple dog, dare. <laughs> oh, I didn't mention this the other day, or maybe I did. Uh, I am going to the Dallas Pin Show now. I don't know if we got any uh, Texans or, or Oklahomans, Arkansasans here. I am hitting up 
Dallas, they uh, contacted me with a opening. They have a waiting list, like a perpetual waiting list. Um, and I finally broke through. So I'm make, making that happen. Knock will be coming to Dallas. I'm interested to see that show, one, because I hear it's a pretty good show and I've never been. And two, because it's Friday and Saturday only. So I've never done that kind of setup. I didn't think I would like it, but I'm kind of... I'll never get sick of seeing you, Mike. <laughs> uh, you can actually, actually I'll, <laughs> you can come help me because I'm going solo, and I hear it's pretty insane. Um, how is Twitch streaming for you compared to doing the podcast? Fun in different ways, harder or easier? Let's see. It's definitely fun in different ways. It's super fun. Like I love doing it. I love chatting, even though like I couldn't sit here and chat. Uh, for four hours, but I also play video games in my spare time, so I like doing, I like doing that. Oh, you're working, Mike. Oh, bummer. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'll, I'll figure it out. Yeah, I don't know where I'm at. Um, harder or easier? I haven't figured that out yet. A little bit harder. Um, just because, like today, I had no plans. Like, some days I have a topic to talk about. Sometimes I play. Uh, a video game um but like today i just wanted to come on and hang out and chat so it's good to like be able to riff off you know what you guys are talking about in chat um so in that thing it's harder in that i wonder am i doing a good job so like oh great blaine <laughs> that should be great <laughs> so um you know yeah i kind of i kind of think so mike that's why i haven't felt like too weird about just flipping on the camera and actually like I'll sit here and do some work sometimes you know I don't like to be silent like working and y'all you know talk amongst yourselves you know you gotta be have some feedback so it's a ton of fun um I haven't figured out if it's harder or easier um so we'll see you know we'll see but I'm enjoying it I'm enjoying the heck out of it I love uh I love chat anytime we can just chat about pens and stationery or just goof off about you know tubular teenage mutant ninja turtles so i know y'all are always watching me jesse um jim asked do i like any board games any favorites the main board game that we play at home and we don't play it enough is tokaido so of course it's the, the japanese uh travel adventure game and it's it's a cool game to play with the kids it's really fantastic looking and it's easy to understand to where like my kids are 10 and 12 so like that's a game for their age group the pacing's not too long there's enough stuff to do there's enough story to tell during the game and then we can be done in like 30 40 30 45 minutes um and it's beautiful we've tried uh, carcassonne that's a little bit complex for the kids they like to do it just to build build the towns and the and the castles and stuff but we haven't like legitimately played carcassonne to the end to where like there's a legitimate match with a legitimate score um but uh tokaido has been uh, very cool <laughs> how can you get lost in tokaido <laughs> rough vacation yeah so it's pretty cool i i i haven't figured out like the the meta to like dominate the kids yet <laughs> which is cool i probably won't i probably won't put that much time in it to figure out uh uh oh oh my kids get older spoiler alert you know from episode one to episode 317 my kids aged so sorry about that kung boar you're in a good spot in the podcast a couple more episodes i figured out i like fountain pens and it's all downhill from there what other games should i play with the kids so you said king of tokyo i don't i've never even heard of that one and tokaido actually has a decent uh, ios app so I, my son plays that on trips bang yeah, yeah, I don't know any of these games. I don't follow the game scene that much. I just know the popular ones. So anything that's good for kids is what I play because I don't have like a group of friends that I can play with. Um, <laughs> which one? Bang sounds like it's about smashing stuff. Is is King of Tokyo about smashing stuff? And by okay i like someone with uh, low board game tolerance that sounds like my kids hanabi i don't know that one either like the only other one i've looked at um 
<laughs> um, another one I've looked at is and uh, it's been around a little bit is the um, lanterns game. That seems like my kids would like lanterns. Hanabi, race the clock built. Okay, that looks pretty cool. Uh, fireworks and rockets. Rockets. That looks cool. All right, I'm clicking all these links now. Sagrada. Oh, that looks pretty. What is it? All right, this looks interesting. Construct your glass stained glass. That looks awesome, Mike. Do y'all watch any uh, Twitch board game streams? I know they're out there. I've never watched one. They have some. There's some with some like really fancy setups, apparently with like lots of top downs and you know four to six players and like multiple camera angles so you can set up and get like the whole gaming experience not just like a not uh, necessarily dungeons and dragons but just seeing like board games like some of these playing splendor i've heard about i know that's a popular one cool this yeah this one that looks cool mike oh you have to get after that Uh, I've heard about yeah we're in our, <laughs> it all it all works Tony it's funny how that happens yeah secret hitler I haven't seen what's the what's the werewolf game I saw my friend Alex talking about that today and I've seen um, other people talking about that game does anyone know what that is is that more of a in person live action yeah secret hitler I I'm definitely I've read up on that because I thought it looked pretty cool. Um, so yeah, same reason why we don't play like cards against humanity. Just not for the kids. It would be my kind of game, but it's card-based bluffing game. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Resistance. Oh, man, I'm, as soon as I turn on my phone on mute, it's blowing up. <laughs> I don't know. Cards Against Humanity seems kind of amazing. And I've never actually played. That would be like a good uh, DC um, DC bar game. Tony, how long has it been? Has it been like a year? All right, now y'all get to watch me talk to my wife about dinner. Because she's working, I'm over here. Thanksgiving, good grief, that's awful. Coup, what's coup? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna not drink if we play cards against humanity. <laughs> I don't want to get, I don't need any uh, record of that event. I know. I know. Okay. I'll have to look at that. All right. So my my wife and I don't have dinner plans for tonight. Um, we've been on easy mode for dinner this week, you know, cooking our, our, our easy basics. I got no blue apron this week. Sorry to disappoint. Um, that would have been good for tonight. I could have made that. So... We're trying to figure out. She doesn't get off till seven. <laughs> so I'm gonna read y'all this text. This is where we're at tonight. So we're. I said I don't know. There's a frozen pizza. I could just cook that because neither one of us will be home till like seven thirty or eight o'clock. She's like, pizza, good, save money, lol. Valid text. All the caddy. I mean, that's what we do, Evan. Right? I mean, that's the entirety of our existence um bok nibs are annoying i haven't seen i've only had two colors of the carry i've had red and i've had gray i didn't notice it but maybe i'm just missing it yeah there's lots of custom custom uh, card stuff you can you can print out yeah like a uh, uh we, we'd have to i'm sure did y'all talk about that on byob jim Y'all could have come up with like the all the. Uh, it seems like Sarah was putting together 
uh, a Cards Against Humanity set or something like that. Speaking of which, I need to text Sarah. As I see, y'all really do get to watch me do non good stuff, non fun stuff on here. Just talked about you on the stream. <laughs> Reminded me I needed to text you. I need to send her something. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's all coming back to me, Jim. So I need to send... She wanted some uh, black... She was going to meet us at Knock yesterday and go to lunch with us. Um, but she's texting me like 4 o'clock in the morning. The girl never goes to sleep so we didn't we were we were long gone <laughs> gone from lunch i think by the time she woke up but she wanted some black wing 530s the 530 gold one and the 340 um 344 um photography one was she streaming at four o'clock in the morning probably i mean that's when she usually streams <laughs> yeah so she texts me and says can i come hang out tomorrow and i get up like i was up at six o'clock i think yesterday and like the text from her was like 3 44 so i text her back figured she might uh, sarah t sends text at 4 a.m she is a late nighter like i'm not so i was up probably right after she went to bed so i sent her the text i was like yeah we'll be at han we're going to lunch at like 11 15 <laughs> that's how early we were up and uh she didn't text me back till last night because because she sleeps during the day she just needs to work third shift like i used i used to send text at 4 a.m when i work third shift but i'm now that i'm a normal person no chance so thank y'all for reminding me so sarah came up because cards against humanity We'll see if she's awake. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll get her in on stream. And maybe we'll get uh, Aqua. Aqua the lovebird. Get her get her on stream too. So yeah, I would say I would watch uh, <laughs> I would watch Sarah's streams, but I'm not going to be up at 4 o'clock in the morning. I'll have to watch the VODs or something afterwards. If you save that. Oh my god. Alright. I gotta check email. I gotta figure out how to do it like how to bring in the extra cameras do you know if it's i mean have can you do that like i would like to do like i would do that immediately i haven't looked at how to add someone in on a camera um but that's just me being lazy i guess i haven't like googled hey twitch i mean i see them all the time with four people doing different streams but i don't know how to i don't know how to physically set that up it's got to be pretty easy I'll, I'll search for a link on that. Come on. Pull up Twitch now. Yeah, there's a ton. There's so many. And it's got to be easy. Yeah, so I'll put that up here to remind me. So we got games over here. Which I'm about to drop and play some well not drop but be right back and uh fire up the destiny i think uh oh that makes sense because it's just another input source that makes sense like to make that screen available hmm okay we'll have to test that out that makes complete sense because I want to do that. I mean, that would be awesome to do. I might have a notebook full of notes here from just Twitch ideas. Can y'all hear that? Can y'all hear that nib? Oh, it sounds good. Do y'all like buttery smooth you can't hear them nibs or do you like a little bit of that scritchy feedback like you could hear when i was just writing i like that feedback um i think that's why another reason why i like the fine and extra fine pens the broads and mediums number one i don't like the rounded nib uh 
Oh, come on, Sherry, step up. Take one for the team. We need someone needs a chaos pen. Silent feedback. I like I like scritchy as long as it's smooth. Like scritchy and rough doesn't work, but scritchy's good. Uh, oh, <laughs> Kung Boy, you don't even know. I make Mike figure out so much stuff, like. Hey, Mike, uh, like, I'll just plead ignorance, right? It's like, hey, Mike, how do you do that thing? And he'll tell me, I'm like, sweet. Didn't have to Google it and go through some nonsense on figuring it out. <laughs> right? Platinum is the prime example of feedback with smoothness, right? It uh, It's almost pencil-like, and I don't mean that in a negative way at all. <clears throat> So Mike and Jim and and others in the chat, if you want to have a wetter writing experience, like Twisbees are notoriously dry and you don't want to necessarily, you know, tweak the nib or anything like that, how can you adjust the feed to increase flow? Would that be pulling the feed slightly away from the nib? So there's a little, I mean, and we're talking like fractions of millimeters here, not like some bent looking thing. Just so there's more ink pooling behind the nib, um, you know, where the feed's not as tied up against the nib. You know, that's my thought, but I'm not like really good at that kind of stuff. I don't manipulate my pins very, very much. So the feed should be closer to the tipping, okay? So you can pull those nibs out, Blaine, you know, just twist it a little bit. And then the nib will go further in to the setting to where you'll see like that fiddle move, feed will move up and down the nib. So you can set it to the standard position, which is how it's shipped. Or when you pull it out, you want to push the nib in further first and then the feed. So that tip of that feeds closer to the tip of the pin. <laughs> if that makes sense. I think that's what platinum does, Kung Boar. I think that's why I enjoy them so much, and I think that's why I should. Ralph would be the perfect Twitch guest. Or maybe I'll just do an interview at, well, I say I'd do an interview at DC. That's not going to happen. I'll be too busy. Yes, yeah, so just... Um, almost flattening it out but for lack of a better term maybe I use brass shims religiously to clean out the uh, tines Blaine you can pick one up from like Anderson pins BAPC whatever I'm missing that <laughs> no because you can get platinum with steel nibs the platinum steel nibs are amazing you know, I mean the the four dollar platinum plays uh play not the plays here the plays here is the expensive one platinum preppy is just oh big apple pins club oh I bet I bet he was a riot I'll talk to him in D C yeah but you can get like the man the platinum preppy if you want to try an extra fine pin Japanese nib like you have the the Lamy and the noodlers. Uh, I don't know if you like fine writing at all, like fine lines. You should check out Platinum. But yeah, if you listen to me and everyone here in the chat room long enough, yes, the uh, the next pins will be more costly. That's kind of our gig, right? Uh, we're all the worst enablers to each other. <laughs> That's kind of how we operate. Which is why I need to sell some pins when I come back from D.C., I'm going through everything. Like I saw, I put a picture of my desk on Instagram right now. I cleaned all those pins. I hadn't even put them away because I don't have anywhere to put them. Like I can store them all in cases, but then I can't see them to what I have. So I'm a little bit frustrated right now at myself for having so many pins and I need to sell probably double digits, like 10 minimum, probably more than that. So that's something I gotta work on back when uh, I get home from DC. Uh-oh. Well, you can't spend much more than than what a Masubi notebooks costs. 
<laughs> but I love him. Oh, just to put, I'm going to put Tony on blast here. He's doing a Masubi notebook review for the pen addict. I just want to say that out loud so I could fully pimp him into it. Because he told me he's going to do it and I hadn't heard from him. But that's only been a few days. So Tony's, Tony's fully on blast now. He's got to come through for me. If not, y'all can let him have it. So I bought the only Masubi I've bought. Oh, look at you. Um, I bought a Masubi in LA to do a giveaway for Pen Attic members. So I did that. So I don't have my own. I couldn't drop for two <laughs> Masubis at once. <laughs> but uh, is Daryl going to... Daryl's not going to be in DC, is he? He's going to San Francisco. I might have to get someone to mule me one. I'll see about that. I'll figure out where Daryl's going to be next. I want one of those pen cases too. I have lots of cucumbers. Yeah, actually, Kung Boy, you don't even need us. As you go through the podcast, if you're only on number six, you're by the time you get to episode like 50 or something, you're going to be done. Yeah, so the Visconti Lava Pen, the Homo Sapiens, we, uh, we talk about that one a lot for nib quality control. So that's one of the pens, what we were talking about. Uh, oh, Jim will be there? All right. Yeah, I don't know when I'll see you next, though. I wouldn't want you to mule one for me. I guess you could mail it to me. I pay for that. We'll talk about that. I might do that because since I gave mine away, which I wanted to do, I haven't had one to play around with. So maybe I'll do that. Oh, back to back to the Visconti. Yeah, that's um, that's one that you'll learn as you go through the process. Uh, Kung Boar. See you, Sam Jing. Yes, I am. That's a great point, Jim. You gonna come see us? We're gonna go to CW Pencils. I haven't I need to plan that out? <sighs> I'm terrible. <clears throat> what new Masubi sizes do we have? I mean, A5 is the greatest size. So, I, I mean, I'll die on that mountain. But what other sizes am I gonna be tempted with? I'm guessing B6. Everyone likes B6. A6 and something smaller. That makes sense. Oh, A6 would be good because they'll fit our seed cases. That could be tempting. When are those coming? Are those in time for San Francisco or are we talking later in the year? I know that stuff's tough to manufacture. Yeah, uh, so London, you know, me and Mike need to do our own London pin show. So San Francisco, okay. We'll see if he has any. I might get, yeah, I, think I was going to say, I'll see like how, how long they last. Probably not very long. Mike and I need to do a London pen show. I think he likes it fine. Um, Kung Boar, it's just mostly vintage. Um, I just need to, uh, me and Mike want to do that one year, go to the London pen show for the Panatic Kickstarter. I don't think we're going to do that next year. Um, I already have plans for next year. Um, do a, something a little bit different in Sweden. Yeah, there's a, I know there's lots of shows in Germany. There's a few in Holland. Um, what are the what are the names of the ones that like Aziza and Steven used to go to when they were over there and Dries goes to? I'm blanking on the name. Um, but I know they've traveled to some in Germany, some in Holland. Yeah, exactly, Jim. Same thing. Tilburg Pin Show. Yeah, that was one of them. So I don't have a list of the international pin shows. Madrid's kind of like the Madrid's kind of the one over there, right? That seems to be the biggest, at least from the pictures. Good, that's awesome, Sherry. Yeah, I'll talk to Stuart oh, about that. You know, maybe I can bring Knock over there and do the London pin show and do our Kickstarter thing over there. That's a great idea, Rewizzles, to go to one of the Pelican hubs. Kung Boar, those Pelican hubs, just look them up. There's, um, it's a great opportunity to go and try pins, like the meetup that you're talking about, like uh, uh, the, local, the local meetups. Um, the Pelican hubs gets a lot of people together with a lot of stuff that they all bring. And, um, you know, share, you can learn about other pens and try other things. That's the best part about going to, thank you, Jim. 
Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, so the Pelican Hub is this huge thing that uh, Pelican uh, does every year to where they get people together all around the world and basically share the, like some of their new products, their new inks and things. But it's basically just an excuse to get pen people together in the same room and talk about pens. And uh, it's kind of sponsored by Pelican. And um, it's really, it, I have never been to one, but all the pictures I've seen, it would be completely worth your while to attend one. Um, that would be great. That's a really good idea. If there's one in Stockholm, if you can get there, they're usually, what are we talking, like September time frame, I think, late September. Am I am I remembering correctly or am I mis misspeaking? Y'all have to tell me, but go to the, uh, just just search Pelican Hubs. Yeah, you don't need to own, own, you don't need to, you don't even need to own a fountain pen if you want to learn about fountain pens. It's, uh, it's sponsored by Pelican, but it's really just an excuse for pen people to get together. Doesn't really have to do anything with Pelican once you get there, other than you get usually get some cool Pelican swag. They do they do a really good job. Thank you all for helping out with these links. I forget that I'm actually sitting on a computer and can type these things in myself. <laughs> I'm too lazy, apparently. I don't know. <laughs> it's like, oh, by the way, you have a computer in front of you. Look at y'all. That's why I love you. That's why I love y'all so much. Doug, did you go to the new pen store in Seattle? Were you part of that uh, part of the grand opening? Have you been? I guess it's not in Seattle. I guess it's a little ways away. But uh, have you ventured out? I'm totally blank in the list. The, the 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 name. But it looked like Lisa and Matt had a good time out there. Sorry, as I'm sitting here talking to you, I remembered I need to write down what I'm gonna what I'm gonna write about tomorrow. Oof, paper quirks. Thank you. Very cool. Pulse bow, pulse bow. That's hard to say. It looked awesome. Is that uh, Rebecca? I think is the owner's name met her a couple of times uh various pin shows uh she's been to she's looked like she, uh, she opened up a super shop looks fantastic <clears throat> all right guys i think i'm gonna wrap it up here unless y'all have any more questions i'm happy to happy to tackle them real quick but uh i'm gonna go take a quick break and then i'm gonna jump back on i got another hour or two to kill and uh i'm gonna kill aliens while i'm at it i'm gonna play a little bit of destiny so, uh, you know, feel free to jump on that stream. We can keep talking about pens, except uh, I'll have a, uh, yeah, except I'll have a controller in my hand and aliens on the screen and uh, shooting them with laser beams. So, love y'all. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. And uh, I'll figure out next week's schedule. Um, I'm going to be out of town for a couple of days. So, it'll be later in the week, uh, Wednesday or later, probably, maybe Tuesday. We'll see how it goes. Um, for the streams, I should have a good, good unboxing next week. I know what's, I know what's going to be in it. I think it, well, I'll leave, I'll leave it a secret. So we'll do, we'll do that next week. But, uh, until then say goodbye, Brad.